All right, on to another project. Okay, so then I started uh, doing some wood carving. And since I've been fascinated with paleontology most of my life, one of the first things I ever decided to carve was a dinosaur. So this is a triceratops because uh, uh, trikes were always my favorite. I always loved them as a kid. And, uh, matter of fact, one of the, my tattoos that I've got is a, it's called a carnosaur. It's a, uh, the name means a uh, flesh eating bull or flesh bull. And it's a kind of a cousin to a T-Rex. But anyway, I've always loved dinosaurs. So even my, uh, my pen jacket that I modeled after uh, the one that uh, the kilted goth did, uh, if you look real, I don't think it's on the video, but now when I wear it, uh, it has a has a triceratops pin on the collar. But anyway, this was one of my first wood carvings. And you can see here where I drilled the holes and you got some little pegs on the ground part here that she sits on. And it's solid wood. It's all, all wood. And, I probably can't see it, but she's got little glass eyes. And uh, this was my first ever attempt at carving something in wood. And that's the, the re that's the reason she's kind of cartoony and, and blocky is because I really didn't. But first of all, I didn't have any, uh, any kind of a model to go, go by, just some pictures and books and stuff. So... I wanted to do a galloping triceratops. I didn't want the slow lumbering things that you see all the time. So it was hard to uh, create my own pattern. If you know anything about, about carving, uh, you start with a solid square block of wood and you have to draw the pattern onto it. And you, you cut that out, okay? And then you hold the pieces together and you lay them down and you draw the pattern from this angle and you cut that so when it finishes you have the the cutout of this and you have the cutout of this but it's squared it's it's you know it's like that if you can see my fingers and so you have to do all the carving to round it off and get those corners off and the piece in between here all this would have been one solid triangle shaped block and so you have to do all the carving between here, uh, all the details of the little bits around the, the frill and things like that. So it's a, a lot of work to it. And then adding each one of the little, uh, almost the, uh, the wrinkles in, this, in the hide and everything. But anyway, that was my first wood carving. And then I did some duck decoys and different things. And let me put this back. And that led to one of my final wood carvings, which was my catfish. And um, the mistakes I made on this, the main one was this piece of driftwood that I chose to mount him on. Uh, no matter how much lacquer or uh, varnish I put on here, this thing just soaks it right in. And so you don't get a coating on it. And, so this thing collects every little bit of dust that, I mean, dust you wouldn't imagine that just builds up on it. But anyway, this guy here is solid wood also, fins. And the way you do something like this, and he's got some dust on him. The way you do something like this is you carve the body and the fins separately. And the fins... You cut a hole, you carve a hole into the body, insert the fin, and glue it in. And so the fins were glued in separately, each one of the fins after the body was, was carved and the shapes and everything. And the whiskers here, all the whiskers you see on this catfish are, this is uh, nails that have been bent and shaped. And this whiskers, this was a threaded rod uh, that has been ground down and on a grinder and uh, shaped and, and glued in. Uh, 
and then after you get all the shape and all the carving done and, and everything that you want done and get the detail that you want uh, you have to paint it and the paint job comes in and, but anyway uh, this was one of the last wood carvings that I I did because uh, wood carving for those that don't know wood carving is very expensive it's a, it takes a lot to buy the bits and the tools and and things like that and and plain and simple i just i just do not have the money to to continue wood carving and uh and i'll give you an example i carved a a goose one time and, and see i can i'm not one of these people who can do the same thing over and over so when i carved uh when I carved the goose, I couldn't just carve a Canadian goose. Uh, I took a, a pattern for Canadian goose and I shrunk it down till it was about six inches long. Then I took a pattern for a, a swan and I shrunk that down to about six inches long. And I took a wing from the swan and the neck from the swan and added it to the pattern for the Canadian goose and worked it together and cut me out a pattern so that I could make a goose that was had its neck in an S shape and was preening under one wing. Then I carved this miniature that was only six inches long. And I carved and painted it, but to to really set it off different from any carving I'd ever seen, I put oversized eyes in it to give it that uh, like a mouse, give it that baby look, and. Uh, the, the thing took me about three months to carve and uh, I took it to a show and the show was uh, the only reason I took it to a show is my my mother just wanted me to take it to a show and the show I took it to was a working decoy show which means uh, you know shooting decoys it's decoys you shoot over uh, so it's no way I could have won any kind of award or anything but there were there were literally probably 2,000 different decoys at this show. And my little, you know, little miniature decoy sitting on a table and all these. And there were uh, about seven judges. And the judges were walking around. They had the tables in a square, and all these decoys were on the tables. And the people were outside of the table, and the judges were on the inside. And the judges walked around, and they stopped at the table where mine was. My decoy was my uh, my carving, and they talked a minute, and they picked my carving up, and they passed it around to each other, and they looked at it, and then they set it back down, and they left, and they went on around the thing, and they announced the winners, and after the judging was over, they went back to the table where mine was and picked it up and started talking about it and everything, and asked who did it, and called me out in the center of all those people, and asked me about it and where I got the pattern, how I decided to do it, how I made it look that way. I told them about the oversized eyes, you know, you know to give it that baby look and, and everything. And they, and they were like, <laughs> it was funny because they were, these judges were telling me, whatever you do, don't ever stop carving because I'd only been carving about three months at the time. But anyway, uh, so I, I'd like a, no, I'd been I've been carving I think about six or seven months by then, but anyway, uh, it took me about three months to carve that that duck and that uh, Canadian goose, and I took it and put it in the shop, and there were decoys in there and wood carvings that were masterpieces that were for sale, and they hadn't sold, and they had been in there for some of them had been in there for ten years mine sold within a month and it sold for 150 dollars that's the price i put on it so i didn't really make any money off of it but it it was a great experience let me put it that way but anyway i just can't afford to do carving anymore and, and i haven't done much art in a while but anyway that's my art that's the kind of stuff i do on top of making jewelry and stuff and that's the update on my werewolf. So I, I kind of have some hopes for this little werewolf guy if I can get him on Etsy. But 
anyway this video is going to be really long so oh one last thing the old man in the fence post for anybody that doesn't know what this is that's literally what it is it's an old man in the fence post uh, years ago people used to use cedar posts to make fences and they would uh, barbed wire fences they would set posts like every 20 feet apart and they would put a they would wrap the barbed wire around it well you go off in the woods and you find those posts sticking up through the woods and the barbed wire is long ago rusted away you take the old post and you cut a piece down cut a piece off of the top of it and usually it's all gray and ugly and you just start carving until you got an old mountain man with a beard and, and a coon skin cap and, and that kind of stuff and then uh, it's a cedar piece that helps keep moths away and you can keep it in a closet or whatever and I've also uh, done uh, like robins and blue jays that you can put in a closet I mean in a, in a drawer to keep moths out of your clothes and things like that but anyway it's an old man in a cedar fence post that's uh, one of my carvings but anyway that's it so hopefully next time I'll have some better news on my uh, on my werewolf cloth and I hope you guys like this video see you next time